Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play! Hearts of Four Kai's Rick of Arabia, let's continue on for the last of off. So we have taken this territory from Muscat. The Dominion of India, unfortunately, was like, hey, you can't just annex all of uh, Oman, okay? Which is like, unfortunate, but what could we really do? We're technically over a maximum support of divisions. I don't, how much is that a penalty of? 4%? I mean, not great. The reinforcement actually is terrible because I don't. I think with a negative four percent penalty, you cannot reinforce your units. I'm pretty sure four percent is too much for the base, uh, for the base game. Without getting the radio research, we probably want to get radio research as quickly as possible. We have like no steel. We do have hundred guns, but I will get more rifles. Get that from Yemen. Yeah, so I really wish you could have taken over all of Muscat. And it's not, we don't have a core here, right? No, we do not. And is this actually the best unit for occupations? Yes. Okay. We keep them as is. Indochina is declaring her independence. Get our troops ready for the invasion of the north. Jamal Shamir is going to have six divisions. Uh, we're going to have... Uh, 13. So a more than 2 to 1 ratio. The Zenil coup in Bulgaria. Should be okay. I don't think we really care about what the uh, Zenil group does. We'll see if Zenil trying to win against Germany. I don't think we care too much about European affairs. Because the whole like Middle East is kind of self-contained. Nobody can really attack into it, and very rarely can countries attack out of it. Other than the Ottoman Empire, but if the Ottoman Empire falls apart, Egypt can attack France. But I think that's basically about it. I don't think anybody can really intervene here. I guess Iran could also attack the Dominion of India. This shows what the hell I'm talking about. But for the most part, it's, it's relatively self-contained. The Conquest of Baradia. Unrest has been brewing across some... For quite a while now, as rumors of possible return to Baradav by the Almuda family have become rampant. These rumors turned facts as a detachment of irregulars from the Ottoman 6th Army of Iraq has, with the blessing of General Al Hashimi, been sent to Barada in an attempt to restore disgrace in order to restore the disgraced dynasty to power and expand Iraqi influence over Central Arabia. Assisting solely of Arab soldiers, the deposed Emir hopes that this will increase his legitimacy in the eyes of the Burundian people, but first reactions have been nothing but damning. Calling the, the dynasty Turkish lapdogs and godless traitors, Saudi loyalists in the city are, be, are receiving widespread popular support. Benefiting from the occasion, however, the Emir of Hail uh, has given the order to mobilize and strike us whilst we are dealing with the Iraqi threat. Whilst raids have been continuing from both sides for over a decade, the blatant attack on Saudi land has reunited a more uh, active phase of the Arab conflict. Well, I'm ready to go to war. I am ready for a war against you. We should... I mean, we just outnumber you at minimum two to one. So, I'm not too sure how Jamal Shimir can actually win. Oh, they declared war on us. Okay, well, I've noticed that a bunch of your units are now basically completely encircled. I think you guys can attack very aggressively into these areas. You can march like this, you march here, you march here. And then you take this city and move your way down south. More propaganda? We can raid more territory. I don't know if we need war propaganda. We're fight technically fighting a defensive war. We yeah, no, we don't need this. Save our political power for the moment. The Ottoman army withdrawals. Despite fears of successful Ottoman-backed invasion of Central Arabia, a chain of leadership in Baghdad has quickly dashed any hopes of Mahanda's family had left. The new governor, following orders on the capital, has immediately decreed an end to any operation in Central Arabia. Officially claiming and recognizes Il Hassan as Suzerain al Qassam in the capacity of the Ottoman governor and thus sees no need for intervention. The Iraqi administration has in practice been forced to evaluate expenses and deemed them more cost efficient to abandon Central Arabia. The wheels have, however, already been set in motion in Qassam and open war between Hayal and Ridia is now inevitable. Scimitars are sharpened and rifles loaded. The burning desert sun rises above a new Arabia. Well, we should have, I would think, a rather easy war. Okay, we got our horsemen to be better. It's like, yeah, we just don't number them two to one. There's, there's no way they can possibly stop us. Okay, you're on a sign, but that doesn't really matter. Test the gulf. 
Can't do anything here yet, because we, we need to make sure that Jamal Shamir does not exist. Division Attrition. You know what? Just a, a 10% Division Attrition and Supply Consumption would be nice for us to not have to deal with. And do we get more Maximum Support Divisions off this, or are we now just in a horrible state? Okay, EJ will send me some Volunteers. I will take them, because why not? You up to Hael. You're now encircled. We got a troop here, but you're still going to be completely okay. And I think... Yeah, I think Germany maybe gave them one province. No, no, no. I think they're supposed to give them, like, this province. And then Belgium will rejoin the Reich's Pact. But we'll see what Belgium does. Okay, so we've taken your capital. Demo Shamir. We've only lost 419 men. I would say those are completely acceptable losses. I mean, you're all very, very much dead. Hold your position for now. Thank you, Egypt, for sending a single unit. The Ottomans have sent a single division over to Jamal Shamir, but... Not really that big of a deal. What, what can they do? Merchant Princes. Linkwish Power. Yeah, so, I don't know. Maybe one day we'll play as the other side of the conflict. But I just don't know when exactly that would be. Uh, don't have any troops on the Ottoman border. Doesn't actually do anything. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we do get extra. From own state, total base, partial mobilization. And I'm guessing, yeah, there's a, there's a modifier here. Yes, war of unification. I was thinking, like, there's no way they're going to give you... Uh, however many units it was. Like, 13 and have you be under the supply limit. Because then you basically just lose... Also, it's 1,000 and 12,000 men. Those are what I would say acceptable losses. It agrees to join the Belgrade Pact. Romania joined the Belgrade Pact. So good for them. They can uh, start a war against Bulgaria in a moment. Have you come over here? Maybe we can get like an encirclement. Actually, I don't know if an encirclement will work because you're technically bordering Ottoman territory. I mean, do you have military access through the Ottomans? No. Do not. Okay, now Russia is moving her way into Central Asia. We've now been defeated. Move your troops over here. I guess you guys don't have a battle plan. So why don't you move your way over here as well? Oh, we did lose a unit. How very sad. We took a little bit of damage there, unfortunately. But, I mean, losing one troop isn't that bad. I mean, I'm, I was, they might have been like an event spawn troop anyway, so. I'm not concerned with it. I want you to move against you. I mean, they lose uh, Jawaf, so let's see if we can go back and take that city from them. But yeah, I mean, we are just, we outnumber them heavily. So I'm not, I'm not too concerned with this. Here were two victory points. We've already taken that city back. Just the one more, just the one last city will be good. Right, let's try Medina. Imminent collapse. Okay, I do like how there's a timer that just basically like ends the forcibly ends the war. There we go. The war is won. We are now in complete control of the country. We'll put our troops on the Ottoman border here. Saudi Arabia. Today, with the victory over the House of Rasids and the conquest of Hejaz, the Saudis stand dominant. With this victory, we shall rule over all Arabs. So we're now known as the Sultan of Nejd. And now we get like a beautiful dark green color. I do like this color. So we're now Saudi Arabia. Do we have, I mean, we have generic researches. I mean, do we... Do factories make any sense? Any like industrial... Uh, options. You actually don't even have any factories to begin with. That's actually it's kind of incredible. Organization, that's artillery attack. I don't just think you would be good. Nah, give me the organization. Amir sway of royalty to the Saudi state. Ten city of Rida saw the procession of sabers upon many soldiers' heads after und uh, Imin Saad's orders. In its wake of the procession of captured emirs, the first including the Rasadis, the Hashemite, Al Thani, and Hayotit, 
were deemed too rebellious to be loyal vassals to the Nezd. The later, including the Al Nahin and the Gadin of the Beni Lam, were more useful. Ibn Saud has decided to spare the families of the Emirs on the condition that they swear total allegiance to Saudi Arabia. This new form of vassalage is different from the ruthless predecessors of Ibn Saud's forefathers operated on and is protected by the Ikhwan in perpetuity. So we do get a new general. Is that general any good? Capacity, skill. No, I think you're all basically bad. So we'll keep our current general in charge. Uh, we did lose a bunch of our event spawn troops, but kind of okay. And it's, you know, to be expected. If Jackie's been elected president of the United States, we will be seeing a four way civil war. I will get some factories from, or some steel from the French. Now, what do we want to do? So we get civilian factories, 10 oil, infrastructure, some steel for free. Military factory. War factories here. I mean, the factories would be really, really nice. Owns Nathan, owns a seer. Are you a seer? No. Adina. You're a seer. So that means us having to attack uh, Arabia. Or Yemen, I should say. That's a heresy. We get some cores. I would love some cores. Loss of the faith. More stability. 20,000 manpower. I mean, I don't know what the point of this focus is because, I mean, how much support is there for any of these factions? Two. Please, please. Okay, we got, I think we have two, zero, and zero. So I'm not too sure even what the point of that focus is. And it's not like Arabia can go cynicalist anyways. But we need that any, but we do need it in order to get our political power. We do get some political power gain plus 10%. Yeah, it's fine. It's not like the, it's not bad. It's kind of just a waste of a focus. That's kind of the worst part of it. Okay, so we got peace. Sultan of Egypt is independent. At peace with Jamal Shamir or is at war with the Omni Empire. And again, like we do want to join uh, for sure when we can. Washington Militiamen, the Camel Corps. The Camel Corps any good? I'm assuming you do well on deserts. 10%. It, it's only a 5% attack and defense bonus. That does not seem very good. I feel like there's better things we could get out of that. Uh, let's just go with the basic upgrades here on our infantry equipment. Because, yeah, like, industry tax, I don't think makes sense. We also only have one factory now. We've lost a civilian factory. I guess because we're trading it away. Okay, we were celebrating Eid. Thank you for the 20 political power. What can I spend that on? I mean, we spend a raiding more uh, Ottoman territory. We might as well. I don't know if that actually weakens the Ottomans. But it does strengthen us. So I will take it. Can you put your way down to Turkestan, Kiev, and Bukhara? I mean, they're not going to be able to withstand you uh, for too long. I'm surprised that Transmere actually didn't do anything... During the, the Russian Civil War. Usually they seize a decent chunk of territory, but uh, not this time. Side from Nat. Wait, why did you take this territory back? How did you take this territory back? It's not yours, it's mine. We, uh, we fought this war, Oman. We don't need to do it again. I think the advantage is like kind of bugged out if you're not fighting the Ottomans in that war. Oh, they, yeah, because they're backed by yeah the Dominion of India. What a weird choice! Why is the Dominion of India? Okay, socialism taking control in Norway. Lands of the heresy, which means we've gotten some more cores. Doesn't mean that we get any factories, because there's no factories in those provinces. Yeah, anyway, I cannot do you until the Ottomans are already uh, gone. Some are good to be nice. Your stability. We don't have oil, so I don't know if that makes too much sense to get right now. I mean, we could get some uh, stability off of it, which would be nice. Yeah, 
God, you're garbage. I don't... We, like, building a navy from scratch is not worth shit. It's so bad. Um... Beta penny modifier, civilian factories. I mean, 15% stability. It's kind of hard to oppose 15% stability. It's pretty good. So my question with the Ottomans, what do you do with Muscat? I don't, I don't remember where it is on this tree. Policy deterrence. Malay system. Most like search of Muscat. Yeah, stability on the peninsula. Maybe it's like an event, I don't know. Yeah, the Ottomans are gonna warn the Bulgarians. Look again, Bulgaria is not gonna live too long. Hopefully the Ottomans take some heavy casualties, but I don't know if they actually will or not. Answer is probably not, because the Bulgarians are fighting just such a massive war, there's no way they can possibly beat everybody. But good luck, Bulgaria. I believe in you, Bulgaria. I believe in you. And in the meantime, let's just keep on raiding the Ottoman Empire, taking all of their stuff. So you know that at some point, Hejaz should rise up. Sidori will rise up. A rock is a little bit less likely to occur. I think, like, yeah, a rock is just much less likely to rise up than Syria. I don't know if it's like a timed-based event or something. But they don't rise up at the beginning of the war like Syria does. But maybe the Ottoman AI just cares more about a rock, so they don't... Like, they don't, they don't attempt to rise up as, as quickly? I don't know. You know, those are, those are my best guesses. Both of them might be wrong answers. Okay, we're gonna keep on doing the raids. It only costs 10 political power, but it's very, very cheap. Export focus. I mean, is there a reason not to do free trade? We have no natural production, so no. Free trade is just a straight up bonus. It's like, oh no, they have more intelligence on my civilian factories. I'm pretty sure the AI knows what my my uh, civilian factories look like to begin with anyways. So I don't think this means anything. Okay, so Yunnan Clique. I mean, who's going to win over here? I mean, the left Kanti is doing okay, but I'm pretty sure the Anshin Clique will still end up beating them uh, in the end. You know, China is probably going to end up losing their war. Of course, the Russians are... Very easily beating everybody in Central Asia. And at some point, they'll turn their attention back on uh, Finland. Like, these are some weird borders. Usually, Finland takes all of Karelia. But they have not done so this time. What, what's German doing right now? State of the economy. They're currently social democratic. The social democratic mean that they're going... They, they are going down the... the Yeah, okay, so they are going to the route that could potentially see them go socialist. We'll see if they do it or not. Warsport could get some more stability. I'm saying rule population isn't bad. Of course, you need us to own Abu Dubai, which we cannot do until the war with the Ottomans is already over. I think we want to go... 500 guns. Get our... Yeah, we need to get our industry going. Kind, It's kind of necessary. Okay, staying off in America. Let's see. MacArthur, what is your plan? Are you going to stay in the west? Or are you going to go to the east? Or I guess stay in the east or go to the west. Or are you going to choose to do nothing? I'm not too sure when exactly MacArthur makes a choice of going east or west. Africa. Are you going to collapse this campaign? No, you're no longer national populist, so you're not going to collapse. Bulgaria still is alive. I want to see how many men have the uh, Ottomans lost to them. 12,000. Okay, so I mean, it's not a ton, but it's, it's 12,000 more than if they didn't go to work at all, so I think it's still definitely worthwhile. Are, uh, again, you're not going to live very long. It's like, it's not really your fault. 
It's it's just kind of how it is. But I think with the uh, with the unification of Arabia, the beginning of our uh, factory output construction in uh, in Nejd, it's a good time for us to end this episode. So thank you for watching. My name is Anthony. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Not just thumbs down. Want to see more? Subscribe and goodbye.